Hello and welcome. In our last episode, we learned two strategies to solve single variable quadratic inequalities using sign analysis. One method uses substitution and then evaluates the signs of the factors. And the other relies on our understanding of where factors are positive and negative. For inequalities in general form that are greater than zero, we realized the solution was the positive intervals, while intervals that are less than zero are solved by identifying the negative intervals. We can use either of our sign analysis strategies for a variety of inequalities. There are often more than two signs to deal with when we're tackling polynomials found in inequalities. Our rules, of course, extend to cover this. I simply identify the number of negative signs in the factors or divisors. An odd number results in a negative, while an even number of negatives leaves you with a positive. We'll apply this to solving some higher degree and rational inequality examples next. Let's look at the fourth degree polynomial found in this inequality. We can find four factors in this statement. So we'll have four roots, or critical points, and therefore five intervals to check. By using our understanding of where each factor is greater or less than zero, we can start setting up a sign table. x plus 3 is positive, greater than zero, beyond negative 3, and negative when less than negative 3. x plus 1 is positive when greater than negative 1, and negative when less than negative 1 and the other factors. Now we can evaluate the signs from our factors looking for odd or even numbers of negative signs. In the first interval, there's four, making it even, which means positive. Second interval, three, which is odd, making it negative. The third's two, so positive. The fourth is odd, negative. And lastly, all factors are positive by the last interval. We look back at the original statement and see that we're looking for greater than or equal to, so all positive intervals and their roots. We can graph and show the solution with this interval notation. We can use either of our sign analysis strategies to also conquer rational inequality statements like this one. We'll test values for this example. We can factor the denominator. This gives us three factors, three roots, and four intervals to check. Set up the number line with roots, and we can start by checking the value negative seven in the first interval to see if this interval is positive or negative. We get three negatives, which is odd, therefore a negative interval. In the second, if we test negative four, there are an even number of negatives, so positive. Then zero gives us one negative, so a negative interval. And the last one is all positive, as usual. The original statement is less than or equal to, so we would therefore be tempted to put solid circles in all of the roots that are included. Hopefully you recognize that by doing this, our two factors in the denominator would equal zero which makes our statement undefined. So we must make sure not to include negative six and one. As always, we can graph and show an interval notation. Try this example on your own using either sign analysis method. Relate the inequality to zero. Subtract the terms using a common denominator. Distribute the negative 3. Combine like terms. And solve. We'll solve by evaluating only the signs. x minus 9 is positive when greater than 9. And x plus 2 is positive when greater than negative 2. Our intervals are once again positive, negative, positive and we want the interval with values greater than zero. Here's our solution as a graph, once again being careful not to include negative two in the solution, and shown in interval notation.
As you can see, sign analysis is an effective way to solve a variety of different inequality relationships. Once again, we see a pattern forming from the signs that can help us with the solution. The last interval is always positive. Then, moving left, one negative is an odd number, so a negative interval. Then two negatives are, of course, even, making a positive interval. Then three is odd, four is even, etc, etc. Looking for these types of patterns is good practice when we are learning new concepts. Like so many things we learn, there's often more than we think under the umbrella of topics like inequalities. From a simple introduction outlining the need for relationships that go beyond things being equal, to graphing a system of quadratic inequalities, to solving complex inequalities using sign analysis, our journey into inequalities has covered a wide range of topics. Understanding is, of course, our ultimate goal. We'll hope you continue to see the role inequalities have in helping us express these mathematical relationships. Keep practicing to gain a deep understanding of your learning so it stays with you for a long time and you continue to make further connections.